In this video, we'll be testing for the conservation of momentum as well as the conservation of energy when two objects collide with one another. Let's get started. So traditionally, the way how we would conduct this lab is when two objects collide with one another, we can mark out their corresponding resultant velocities. There is a problem about conducting a lab where two objects are rolling, however. You'll notice that as an object rolls, not only is it moving horizontally, it also contains rotational energy. Moreover, it also has another property called angular momentum. And that's a little bit too much for today's lab. So we're going to simplify things down by quite a bit. Instead, we'll be using this crazy contraption right over here. Now, if you observe this contraption carefully, you'll notice that I'll, I am able to allow a ball to roll down this ramp, and eventually that ball will level itself off, ensuring that the horizontal velocity is measurable and the vertical velocity is, as you guess it, at zero. So when we conduct this lab, we can actually determine how fast it is traveling once it hits the ground, based upon a few basic calculations. First off, as mentioned before, we'll notice that even though it possesses a horizontal velocity, its initial vertical velocity is at zero. So that's one of our givens. We can also measure the height of its drop. Make sure that you measure it from the base of the ball, as if it is the bottom of the ball that will hit the ground at the end of the activity. So in this case over here, the drop is at 93 centimeters. We also know that the acceleration due to gravity is at 9.81 meters per second squared downwards. That provides us our three givens. So we know the particular drop height, the initial velocity in the y dimensions at zero, and gravity is pulling it down. Along with it, we have our uncertainties in our measurements. We'll then take the third kinematics equation, noticing that this term over here will go to zero since vi is equal to zero, simplifying the equation even further. And then we can isolate for time. Once you've completed the calculations with those givens above, you can measure the exact time that it falls with a very small degree of uncertainty. What you also notice in this data over here is that this would actually work out to half of your initial calculated uncertainty. Because any time that you perform a square root of an uncertainty, the final uncertainty actually cuts in half. Pretty neat, isn't it? Also, before we continue on the lab, it is also important to measure out the initial masses. Okay, so we have two masses involved. Mass one, which is the ball bearing. This will be the heavier mass. And then we have our lighter mass, the one made out of plastic. And even in these measurements, you would have noticed there was an uncertainty associated with it. The uncertainty for any given uh, digital scale is going to be half of the least significant digit. So you'll see that this can estimate to the nearest hundredth of a gram. So the uncertainty will be half of a hundredth or five one thousandths of a gram. That's how you determine the uncertainty in any digital scale. Back to the lab now. You'll notice that I have a string attached to this apparatus. In fact, the string is attached to a pendulum bob. When you let go of the bob, it will rest at a particular point on this sheet of paper. Just to let you know the sheet of paper, you can attach it with small little strips of tape on opposite ends. Just remember to remove it once you're done. This point over here, that's also known as ground zero. In fact, if I had a mass that was placed up here, if I just dropped it, it would land at that exact spot. All right? That will be known as our origin when we continue on with our data collection. So the next step is to figure out what the initial velocity is. For one, we know the time that it will fall, 0.4354 seconds. So if we actually know the range that it drops, we can determine the initial velocity. So the first thing you want to do is that you want to do an initial drop to figure out approximately where to place the carbon paper. And after you've done that, you would re repeat this five times. And once you remove the sheet of paper, you will have the collected data. Grab a pencil, mark it off. This is the velocity of object number one, its initial velocity. How do you determine it? Well, as you may know, that's ground zero. So this tells us the displacement of 45 centimeters. 45 centimeters divided by 0.4354 seconds will give us our corresponding initial velocity. This also defines our horizontal dimension where the vertical dimension will obviously be orthogonal to it. And we have to make sure that the orthogonal dimension 
also crosses through ground zero. So this will define our y-axis and our x-axis. Most likely, you'll be analyzing all the data from this perspective. The next step is to make sure that the screw over here is properly leveled. If you're wondering what do I mean by properly leveled, well, you have to ensure that when the heavier mass collides with the lighter mass, that they collide at the same exact altitude. If this ball was a little too high, when it bounces off, it's going to have an initial y-dimensional velocity that's non-zero, thereby having a greater time of fall. If you set the screw too short, when it gets knocked off, it'll get knocked off downwards, having an initial velocity that's non-zero, resulting in a shorter time of fall. So we cannot rely upon that time anymore. So to ensure that our time is consistent for all falls, we have to make sure that the two balls will collide level with each other. And that's about the height that we want it at. The next step is to slightly tilt the screw so that it's not exactly straight. This allows the two balls to collide and have their own corresponding X and Y displacements. So we'll do our initial drop test again to figure out where to place our two carbon papers. And then we repeat our drop test another five more times. And after you've collected all your data, as we've done here, make sure you circle your data points and to properly define them. Where this was the initial mass's final velocity, and this is the stationary mass's final velocity. Again, we define our horizontal axis from our initial velocity compared to our ground zero point this defines our y dimension, and now we can figure out the corresponding final velocities by determining the displacement and dividing it by that pre-calculated time of 0 0.4354 seconds. And we can repeat that for every other point here. And that's it for data collection. You can measure the corresponding angles if necessary, or determine the horizontal and vertical components of its path to complete the rest of your lab.